kilometers have been driving for a while and this is just like a massive expanse of land that has been mined out and is still being mined. You can see a lot of uh, workers are still operating here. Most of these people are actually a local Guyanese, but there are more recently some Chinese miners that have come. Guyana is one of the smallest countries in South America. The largely undeveloped nation is rich with gold, timber and other natural resources that have attracted foreign investment recently from China. Chinese China's growing presence in Guyana is part of its increased investment in Latin America and the Caribbean. Last year, China's investment and construction projects in the region neared $16 billion, a fourfold increase since 2005. In that time, Chinese state banks have also loaned over $130 billion to governments in the region. Loans that often fund infrastructure projects run by Chinese state-owned enterprises. Much of this investment comes through China's Belt and Road Initiative, an ambitious push to bring development funding and soft power influence around the globe. In Guyana, one of the flagship infrastructure projects is a hydroelectric power plant to be built deep in the rainforest. We flew over the site with land rights activist Michael McGarrell, who travels across the country mapping threats to indigenous territories. So that's the road that leads to the hydro project site. So this is where they're going to be building a hydroelectric plant. Yes. Yeah. And it's the Chinese that are building this, right? Yes, the Chinese are the ones who are building this. It's going to flood large swaths of land. The biodiversity that lives in this area will die. Um, indigenous peoples, we hunt and we fish in this area. I mean, building a hydro dam will decimate that. Guyana's largely intact rainforest operates as a crucial carbon sink, capturing more carbon dioxide than the nation emits. Keeping it intact is crucial, not just for the tribes who live here, but also for alleviating the effects of climate change around the world. McGarrell brought us to the village of Morawa, where members of the Patamona tribe are fighting to get legal recognition of their lands. We want a land title so that not any company could come in and say, oh, this is our black or this, mm -hmm. because it belongs to us. We, the people, the first people of mm -hmm. this country, it belongs to us. Not from a company from China, not from America. But companies are staking claims, including a Chinese timber operation and license holders for mining gold. On my GPS here, I can see the mining concessions around Morawa. Yeah. Oh, wow. So we're actually in the middle of a yeah. lot of... We're surrounded by mining concessions yes. here. Does that mean at some point there will be mining happening? Yes, there will be at some point. Is it not inevitable that as Guyana is opening up, this way of life and indigenous people's communities are going to change? Yes, things are changing. The world is moving on. But we must determine that rate of change. Guyana is changing faster than McGarrell would like. A huge discovery of oil has transformed Guyana's economy into one of the fastest growing in the world. China is poised to cash in, not just from its 25% stake in oil reserves, but by funding the roads, hotels, and other infrastructure needed to fuel that growth. 
But there are concerns that China, with its outsized influence, could unfairly benefit from the country's rapid ascent, leaving Guyanese citizens behind. Chinese infrastructure spending in other developing nations has been criticized as opaque and a way of propping up corrupt regimes. We wanted to see if Guyana's development is being fueled by corruption. So we switched to hidden cameras. So I'm going to be filming undercover with my Chinese friend who does not want to go on camera for obvious reasons. He's going to be posing as a successful Chinese business person. I'm going to be posing as his secretary. And we're going to be trying to uncover how the Chinese are doing business with Guyana's government. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Me and my colleague, who we'll call Mr. Chan, presented ourselves as investors, looking to get involved in mining, logging, and construction. We spent weeks working our way into elite business circles and captured conversations we wouldn't normally have heard. Eventually, we were welcomed to a private country retreat where we met influential business people including one timber exporter who offered us advice on how to best work the system. <laughs> the person we're told we need on our side is Vice President Barad Jagdeo, arguably the most powerful politician in the country. He spent 12 years as president and still pulls huge political weight. Outside Guyana, he's been heralded as a climate hero, promising to keep his country green even as it drills for oil. We're told that the person who can get us in the room with him is a man named Su Jurong. <laughs> Mr. Su is a longtime Guyana resident. He's one of the country's biggest landholders in timber and mining, with stakes in the fuel industry as well. <laughs> because of concerns over COVID, Su kept his distance, but he was still eager to meet with new investors. <laughs> Sue openly bragged about his influence with the vice president, who owns the house Sue lives in, and whom Sue refers to as his boss. And Sue says he can help us in Guyana for the right price. <laughs> Sue's not the only person to tell us that the service fees these middlemen take are essentially bribes for big deals. This is a general manager of China's largest state-run construction firm who confirmed that companies use middlemen to pay these bribes. It's companies like the one he works for, linked directly to the Chinese Communist Party, who win a lot of Guyana's largest government contracts. This guy works for one of the biggest state-run organizations, and the way that they're seeming to do business here is also very much under the table. It does imply very much that the Beijing authorities know exactly what's going on. Mm -hmm. 
Later, Su showed us evidence of his own involvement in multi-million dollar deals between Guyana's government and a large Chinese state-run corporation, including a contract for his work as an agent on a big road project, and letters sent from the government about the same hydropower plant we flew over in the rainforest. For our deal, Mr. Su painted us a wide range of investment opportunities, logging rights, a stone quarry, gold mining, and the most promising of all, land in a prime location where a hotel and casino could be built to cash in on the oil boom. Sue says the money we pay him, under the guise of legitimate business, will actually make it to the vice president. Before we could pay Sue and the vice president, we would need a way to get large sums of money into the country. We told Su that like other companies he does business with, our capital is tied up in China, and China has strict controls over sending money abroad. We'd need a workaround. So there's been a lot of hints throughout our time here that the way that foreign companies are normally getting money into the country is through um, different money launderers that operate here. So we've managed to get hold of a couple of those guys who say that they are able to transfer huge sums of money into the country, um, and we're going to meet with them now. This man told us he works with a team to transfer huge sums of cash, both for private clients and Chinese state-controlled companies. He says he's personally delivered cash directly to government officials. The way he does this is called flying money in Chinese. Money is placed in a bank account in China. The equivalent amount, minus a hefty fee, is taken out in Guyana, getting around taxes and border restrictions. And if it's dirty money, as you say, Haitian, what's the solution for that? With our access to cash secured, we moved forward with the deal. As a final step, Su took our colleague, Mr. Chan, next door to meet the vice president himself. Thank you so much for seeing me. Yeah, please have a seat. Jagdo avoided talking specifics, but told us how close he is to Su. Do you understand our deal in detail? No, I'm, I'm not getting involved in business. You will get the support. Su is my friend, he gets all the support. We have to be clear about all the agreements. So, deals with all the agreements. I don't, I don't. I understand, I understand. The thing is that my um, thing is that I am in government. I 
Yeah. So I can I assist from government side. I know. That's it. Sue interjected, telling Mr. Chan this wasn't the place to talk about the bribe. Okay. Thank you so much for giving me time. I hope I can see you again. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Personal profit isn't the only thing at stake here. China's expansion in South America has set off alarms in the U.S., which has long held political dominance in the region. China has an overall goal to become the wealthiest country in the world and the most powerful country in the world. That's not going to happen on my watch. Biden and G7 leaders recently pledged hundreds of billions of dollars in global infrastructure funding, a direct counter to China's Belt and Road. One fear is that generous Chinese funding comes with geopolitical strings attached. And last year, that seemed to ring true, when Guyana made a policy decision that many saw as a direct result of pressure from China. The island of Taiwan, which China claims as its own, announced it was opening a trade office in Guyana. The US applauded the move. But only hours later, Guyana pulled out of the agreement. One of our business associates, who has close ties with the Chinese embassy, told us that the reason Guyana pulled out was because of Chinese funding. There's no possibility for Taiwan to have uh, any office in there. Mm. 即刻呢, 立刻马上, 过了几天, 中国就跟互相领导员通电话, 就第一期代表给贵人了, <laughs> so it's all about money. It wasn't until months after our conversation that talk of a $1.5 billion loan made the news suggesting that our contact did have inside knowledge about what went down. When reached my phone recently, he said he didn't remember ever saying this. Vice President Jagdeo said no loan was made and that China had never pressured them over Taiwan or any other issue. No financing from anybody comes with political strings. A few months later, we confronted the vice president about whether the massive influx in foreign investment is plagued by corruption, and if he himself has a part to play in that. You know, Guyana has attracted a lot of foreign investment recently. What is it that Guyana has to offer? The opportunity to make money. That is why people are coming here. So that's what I'm going to say. <laughs> Some of the biggest infrastructure projects you have are being built by Chinese state-run companies. Given the contentious issues between the US and China, does it ever feel like Guyana is being used as a pawn within, you know, within these two global superpowers? I don't think we're such a big player to have the arrogance to think that we're so important to the two parties to be used as a pawn. I think we're just a small country trying to do the best for our people. I mean, this year, Guyana dropped two points on the Transparency International's Corruption Perception Index, which puts it among the most corrupt in the region. Do you accept that within this government and within this country, there is a problem with corruption? First of all, I have a problem with the indices, but we do have real corruption in countries like ours too. This is like a blackness index. The darker you are, the lower you are on the index. The developed countries hardly ever get on this index. And they have more institutional corruption, in my view. What about within your government? Yeah. Do you accept bribes? No, I don't. We, you know, we've spoken to a number of Chinese business people in Guyana who said that you do accept bribes. And they've said that, in fact, 
it's the only way to get business done. Yeah, well, I, I can't comment on that. You can, you can just sit there and fabricate that. Unless you say who the person is, I can't comment on anonymous people. Okay, well, let's talk about specific individuals. What is your relationship with Mr. Su Jurong? Su? Oh, Su? My relationship? N nothing. He is he's a tenant in my place, yeah. And he's a good friend of yours? Yes, um, yes, yes. He is a friend of ours. He claims that through his very close relationship with you, that he's able to get any deal done. Well, I don't, I don't... Do you use middlemen like Sue in order to take money on, on your behalf so that you can keep your hands clean? No. no. The answer is no. We met with a manager from a Chinese state-run corporation who confirmed that they use individuals like Sue in order to get these deals done and that they pay them a consulting fee which essentially serves as a bribe to individuals like you. I mean, what well, would you say to Well, I that? don't know because, again, that's all. You're building everything on what you have met and what people told you. I don't know. I can't comment on some anonymous manager now telling you something. I mean, these are, these why, are individuals who have significant you want me, business interests why do in this you, country. So why I'm do you think, yes, there, but why do so you think? so many people are telling us one thing about, you know, this yeah, is but, the way that deals get done. But it I'm is, wondering what your but take don't is. you know, when the reporters come from abroad, this is their catch you kind of thing. You always want to make a developing country leader look corrupt. So you've done your, your bit. Will you investigate at least? You know, these no, 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 definitely. I'm going to ask about all of this, but I can't, I can't comment reasonably. I, how can I comment on these, these issues? A few days after meeting with us, Jagdeo released our interview to the press, seemingly to get ahead of the onslaught of public reactions. Guyana's president leapt to Jagdeo's defense. I heard that the reporter had certain special interests Neither the timber exporter we spoke to nor the Chinese state-run firms mentioned in this piece responded to our questions. But in a statement, the Chinese embassy called our reporting false and said all Chinese companies operating in Guyana follow local laws and international practices. Su also claimed he'd never said this and released a statement saying that he'd never acted on behalf of any government official or promised any favor or business-related reward. Since our interview, negotiations over the contract to build the hydroelectric power plant, which Sue said he was involved in brokering, have stalled. And the vice president now says he plans to take legal action against Sue for what he told us. I'm going to take repetitional action. I'm going to, I'm going to sue him. And I'm looking to him to throw him out, looking for him. Can't find him so far, but as soon as I find him, this will happen. But others have called for Jagdeo himself to be investigated. The opposition believes that VP Jagdeo should do the decent thing and resign to facilitate an unbiased investigation. And the people of Guyana, they're still left with questions about who gets to buy their country and for what price. Somebody may be making corrupt deals to give away our lands, basically, because we're not benefiting from it. But we will not give up because we see that the, the system has been designed in such a way that it goes against you know, what we're trying to do. We will continue to struggle for our lands. It is not for us now, but we have to think for our children, our grandchildren, those who come after us. I'm Michael Learmonth, Editor-in-Chief of Vice News. Too often, traditional news outlets shy away from the real stories and experiences of those living through global conflicts, not Vice News. Our reporters are on the ground, fearlessly covering the human stories that shape our world. You and millions of others can continue to read, watch, and listen to Vice News for free. But we hope you'll consider making a one-time or ongoing contribution of any size at vice.com slash contribute. Every contribution, no matter how big or small, helps support the journalism Vice News brings to you every day. Thank you.